It feels nice to be back here again. It does. I miss this space. It does. Although now we have a green screen, so arguably we could take a picture of this ba- background and broadcast from anywhere. They would know because they would see us like sprawled out with an immense amount of room if we were anywhere but in this space. Should I just hit your hand? Hi everybody, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. 2015! Season 2. Season 2. We made, yes. it, made it all the way to Season 2. We yes. made it past the new year. And we're still live, and we're still kicking mostly Ryan. Uh, Ryan has a busted ankle, as you might have seen in our Christmas video. <laughs> yes, I, I broke it walking the dog, fighting snow ninjas. Yes, that is so. the official story, and we're sticking to it. Yeah. Uh, but yes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Because it is Monday. It's like... January something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it's the fifth. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I'm dating us because this is a two part episode, so uh, it doesn't matter. This will be all of January. We'll be Happy New Year Day episodes because uh, we wanted to talk about the year in review. I mean, 2014, not the the world year because a lot of stuff happened. He can, I we couldn't encapsulate it into a paragraph, let alone a podcast, no. or a podcast, let alone a paragraph, whatever. But yeah, I mean, between police abuse and Aboriginal women going missing and the government doing nothing about it and receding environmental legislation and Toronto elections, there's a lot of things that happened in 2014. 2015, I think we have an election, a uh, federal election. Is it 2015? 2016? I think 2016. I like that we had a provincial and a... Uh, Yes. Municipal election didn't even make the cut in my like brief year review <laughs> paragraph. Did not care one bit, which we'll probably talk about in a future episode because it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. But in the meantime, icebreaker. Mm. Huck, Ryan. Yes. What is your perfect way to celebrate New Year's? My ideal would probably be to uh, get everybody over to my place um because you're lazy and you don't want to leave yeah i really don't like leaving um get everybody together people that are relaxed and not interested in boozing it just you know some light refreshments you could have a few drinks but nothing too crazy and then just sit down and watch movies or listen to music maybe play some games but mostly just watching netflix just throw netflix up and watch that until roughly midnight acknowledge that the year has changed drink your champagne kiss your partner and then get well, out so you can go to bed yeah or something like that <laughs> you know new year's done go home so i think that would be um it, it comes from bonus challenge question what movie would you watch uh you know i would probably want to make it thematic so so zombies uh well no i i would say more like not everybody likes the rocky movies or the the karate kid movies but it'd be fun to do something that has multi Multi episodes, like I've heard, there are six Star Wars movies. Is that there true? are six? Um, there's three that we know of. We could do Star Wars. We could do Star <laughs> Trek. Um, or you could, I guess, you could pick a TV series. Like if you want to watch like all of a season or series of Doctor Who, oh, man. you could do that. That'd be kind of fun. Or watch all of the Christmas specials, or something like that. So um, it's that's what we did growing up. We would rent a whole bunch of movies, and uh, then just my sister and I would try to stay up as late as we could. Um, so I, that's kind of my bag. I don't really like, I like going out to a degree, but I prefer to stay home. Fair enough. How about you, Jim? Um, I prefer to go out mostly because I have a small apartment, mm-hmm. but, uh, and I have actually run the, rung in the new year like this a couple of times. Uh, I did not do it this year. This year I was mostly playing Dragon Age, which we'll get to in a little bit, but, uh, I play D&D mm-hmm. or, you know, I role play in some other, in some other kind of way, play some kind of tabletop game. But yeah, that is... You know, ideally we all show up around noon because we all have the day off and we're like, all right, well, let's uh, let's roll some characters and do some things, sling some dice, and 12 hours later you're all done, you go home, you're all tired. Mm. It's a good time. But the downside is is that if you know more than, say, five or eight people, mm-hmm. if, like, 12 people are like, hey, yeah, I really want to come to that, you... You have a difficulty. Mm. Um, and as you travel through life and accumulate more friends, uh, that becomes a challenge because running a D&D game for 12 people is really is really challenging. Right. But um, nonetheless, 
my solution to that is to have two D and D games. <laughs> Hence why I have two D and D games. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is sort of my 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 perfect ideal New Year's. I like how neither of them involve anything really re- like genuinely related to New Year's except using it as an excuse when no one has to work in the morning to get together and do stuff that we could literally do any other time of the year but don't. Mm-hmm. Well, except for me because I play D&D every week or so. <laughs> D&D live stream starts back up on January 11th, so that's going to be fun. I'm excited at any rate. They're all going to die. It's great. Uh, anyway, this is our sort of best of podcast, best of 2014. Not best that came out in 2014, because much like this podcast, which happened in the past, and you are viewing or listening to a recording, if you are listening to this, you are missing out on our beautiful faces. You can find us on YouTube. If you are watching us on YouTube, that whole comment and aside was absolutely wasted. But, we live in the past... So this is not necessarily the best stuff that came out in 2014 because we probably don't know anything about it. Uh, This is the best stuff that we experienced and took in and played and, I don't know, other verbs or something in 2014. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I find that a lot of the content creators I watch always do some sort of year-end recap of all the things that they've seen and done and whatnot so it's it it seems appropriate that we would have our own list of things yeah i mean it's just our our list of stuff doesn't actually i think involve anything that came out in 2014 um with the exception of probably guardians of the galaxy yeah because yeah i mean like i watched total biscuits review of you know best games of 2014 and games that came out there was some actually actually i did play a game that came out in 2014 I played Shadows of Mordor, and it was amazing, but it is not my game of 2014. It is my 2014 game of 2014, but not my my game game mm. of 2014. It's complicated. Mm. Anyway, mm. Uh, you have a book-related confession to make. Yes, I, um, I didn't really read as much as I wanted to in 2014 um, for various reasons, but... So the book, I... I there, I have two answers for top book read in 20, 2014. You, always, you have two answers for everything. I do have two answers. The one, the unique book, or I should say the book that I read for the first time and finished in 2014 um, was a book, uh, it's called the, A Short History of Modern Philosophy, written by, oh, his name escapes me. Was it actually very short? Uh, it was about 300 pages and it covered from Descartes to um, Wittgenstein. Very short history of early modern philosophy. Uh, Scruton. Roger Scruton, I think is his name. Um, So that book wasn't written in 2014, but I read it in 2014. Um, And so that would be my book for... the the, the, A book that I had not read before that I read. Uh, But the book that I did read and enjoyed, because you can't help but to enjoy it, is I reread the book one of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. So the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I was I was waiting for you to repeat the title, just yeah. for the sake of repeating the yeah. title. So, um, anytime I read that book, it's a charm and a pleasure, and that was definitely <laughs> my favorite book to read in 2014. Oh my. Uh, my favorite book uh, that I read last year was... I read, so, I, I in, in late in 2013, I took a trip, uh, just to Toronto, just for a weekend, but I took the train, took the bus, took the bus... And I read a lot of books when I'm on the bus, and I read about nine of these space mercenary books, and they're all like future history space mercenary stuff. It was a, it was a sort of um, continuum uh, or, or collaborative universe writing by a bunch of sci-fi authors at the time. It's in the like late 1980s, I want to say early 1980s, but. Uh, and it was all mostly about dudes doing dude stuff, books by dudes, and, and, and things like that. And I got really sort of fed up. So in 2014, I didn't read any books by dudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just sort of went through my shelves and found a bunch of books by, by women, and I read them. And I don't know that I have any, like, serious critical opinions on, on the differences or whatnot. I mean, I was sort of primed for appreciating differences, and a lot of it also depends on genre and era and preferences of readers at the time 
But uh, nonetheless, it means that the greatest book that I did read in 2014 was really great. Um, and uh, it, was, it was by a lady. It was by M.K. Wren. And it was called A Gift Upon the Shore. And it was all about the preservation of books in a post-apocalyptic society. Specifically, not just preserving books from, um, you know, weather and, con- and, and you know, terrible conditions, post-apocalyptic conditions, but preserving them from post-apocalyptic ideologies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the notion is the, the protagonist lives with and is a teacher uh, in a group of post-apocalyptic uh, evangelicals. And several of them have some choice opinions about the content of the books and the content of her lessons, um, regardless of whether or not those are facts. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, religious and secular tension, but but really the tension or, or orbits around why ideas are are worth preserving. I mean, it's it's easy to see why you'd preserve you know engineering manuals and physics textbooks and things like that. Like you mm-hmm. need things that help you understand the universe, but you preserve Jane Austen and Mark Twain because you also need things that tell you about the way that things work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was definitely my, my, my book. My number two book was probably Gone with the Wind, which was really good. But like yeah, it was a great it's it is the great American novel. Uh for reasons which are apparent when you read it and you're like three hundred pages into it and you're like, wow, this turns out this is the great American novel. Who knew? Maybe I should throw that on my book list. It's a good time. It's super thick. Mm-hmm. But I would recommend it. I also have the sequel, but I haven't read it yet. Sequel, not by the same author, but apparently is still a sequel. I don't pretend to understand it. Anyway, best game that you played. Uh, So I played a few games this year. Again, not necessarily all games released in 2014. Um, For example, I replayed a little bit of Borderlands, um, and now I'm currently working through the pre-sequel. The pre-sequel did come out in 2014. It did come out, but I haven't finished it yet, and I'm not far enough into it to make a a decent value judgment. Just tell everyone you love it. I do love it so far. (laughs) Um... I also played, uh, like, I picked up Ghostbusters after Harold Ramis died, um, so I started replaying that, and there's one other one. I was playing through a bunch of the, the Lego games, because Sarah really got into the Lego games. Oh, nice. So, so uh, Lego Harry Potter, Lego um, Hobbit, Lego Lord of the Rings. You play these on console, right? Uh, all on 360. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then recently I picked up the Le- uh, Lego Star Wars collection, uh, episodes one through six. Sweet. All on one disc. Uh, but I would say the game that came out in 2014 and that I enjoyed the most was probably South Park Stick of Truth. That was really good. Uh, yeah, I was surprised. I mean, I know a little bit of it, um, so but I don't think I got all of the uh, all the nuances or all the references to the show as somebody who is a hardcore fan. But I caught a lot of the references. Uh, but it was one of those games that you just you, you know you turn it off and then you're like oh I want to keep playing because I want to see what they ha- what happens next in the storyline um so I mean it was, it was raunchy crude you know definitely not something to play with kids in the room um but it was it was a fun game and I really enjoyed playing that through that one uh Kathleen from Loading Ready Run did a let's play of it she did uh she streamed it mm-hmm. and I watched it there because I do not like South Park mm-hmm. I don't it's not my kind of jam. I often find it to be really problematic. I don't... There's a lot of things I don't like about it. But... The game looks really good. Mm-hmm. And I was watching it and I'm like, I don't like South Park. But I'm going to watch this anyway because it's Kathleen and she's really funny. And... I'm like, this game looks kind of good. I didn't play it. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I have no real ambitions to play it. But... Because I, I watched her play the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But... I, uh, I did watch it and it did look really good. Uh, I played a couple of games that came out in 2014. I played the I played Borderlands uh, the pre sequel, mm-hmm. which is fun. Uh, I played Shadow of Mordor, which I believe I mentioned is awesome. But my my game of 2014 is I I rediscovered Dragon Age Dragon Age Inquisition uh, Dragon Age three came out in last year, and several people I know have been playing a lot of it. And I went, oh, that looks like it would be kind of fun. But I never played Dragon Age two. So, over Christmas, I played Dragon Age 1 all the way through, and now I'm about three quarters of the way through Dragon Age 2, mm-hmm. and uh, I bet you when I finish this, whenever I do finish it, I'm just going to buy Inquisition and play my ass through it. 
because uh, it looks really fun and it looks really cool and I'm now super attached to and invested in all these characters as you noticed, when, when when Ryan came over before filming, I had just finished beating a boss, and I'm staying there. I'm like, I can't, I can't. You you have to come in because I'm watching this cutscene. I just I just beat up the air shock, and now we're like deciding the fate of nations. Yeah, I felt like a super dork, but I'm really glad that I watched that thing because it sets up the next act, and it's hmm. important. And once we're done here, I'm gonna go back and play it so I can find out what happened. Yeah, I hope I hope to go home and continue playing Borderlands. But <laughs> you should probably have, go to bed. Yeah, I probably should go to bed. But we have friends over, so we probably have to to play host and entertain for them. Anyway, um, best movie. I find that uh, I don't go to the theaters a lot, and since um, I'm trying really hard not to torrent things anymore, especially now that the Pirate Bay has been taken down, it really I just haven't been incentivized enough to try to find a replacement. So a lot of the stuff I watch is things I've already seen on Netflix or like things I've seen that are on Netflix that I've already seen in the past. Uh, so in terms of new movies this year, um, I don't remember everything that I've seen in theater, but I just saw guardians of the galaxy. I also saw guardians of the galaxy. That was the last movie I saw in the theater and it was and really it good. It had an overly violent space raccoon. So, uh, I love it. Yeah. I just, it was a fun, like it it wasn't any, it didn't even feel like a popcorn movie. A lot of times, like for example, I thought of the first Thor movie as a good popcorn movie. It wasn't it wasn't like well written. Uh, wasn't, no, it wasn't, no, it wasn't, that was not a fault it, that it had. It wasn't it wasn't the best um, acted movie, but I, it, I was entertained as a popcorn movie. You just sit there, you mindlessly shovel popcorn in your mouth, and it's just you're you're kind of entertained by the moving pictures and stuff. But I found Guardians of the Galaxy was was more than that. Yeah, was, no, not, I definitely had real feelings during Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. So I would say that that is probably my favorite movie of 2014. Cool. Um, I'm just looking at our time. Uh, fame, favorite other things of 2014. Um, favorite YouTube channel that you discovered or relearned to enjoy... I would say, I don't remember if I discovered this in 2014. I have a sneaky suspicion I discovered it in 2013, but uh, PBS Idea Channel is the one that I caught every weekly update. Um, Mike Rignetta, who's the uh, one of the main writers and the host of that show, also started a podcast uh, on, his, on, on, his, on the side on his own uh, called Reasonably Sound. Which I love the fact that his sign off is this podcast has been reasonably sound. I when I create my own podcast, I really want to have a catchphrase that is that clever. Um, so, but that's he, really what you're waiting for, isn't that's, it? That's a waiting, clever catchphrase. Waiting, that's the only thing that I need now. I forget regular content. I need a clever catchphrase. I'm going to make you commit to that in the next episode. I just hope you're aware of that. <laughs> um, but uh, he created a, a second po- secondary uh, show, the podcast, reasonably sound. Because he, I don't think he's a sound engineer, but he's just a little bit of a sound nerd, and so he ta- he he does episodes on sound and sonics and whatnot. So he did an entire episode on A four forty, which is the standardized tuning for musical instruments. Mm-hmm. Um, a really nice guy, and then also he did a Thanksgiving episode where he just he did a Vlogbrothers style, just filming sound ambient sounds and then talking about it. So just like in the car, you could hear him getting out and like turning on the GPS and driving out of his house and driving to his, I'm assuming it's his parents' place. Then he did a few comments and he did a shout out to the Vlogbrothers. Um, But anyways, I was so um, impressed by the quality of his capturing because clearly he's capturing on the road. Um, So like maybe when he was on the plane filming or recording himself, he had his laptop open. But when he was in his car, it's almost I'm almost positive that it's his phone with a, with a headphone jack or something. So I tweeted at him. I'm just like, hey, I really enjoy your show. I'm just curious what hardware you used. And he just, within minutes, shot me back a response. Like, hey, thanks for, I, I appreciate that you enjoy the show. I used my Galaxy S3, my iPhone, or sorry, my, um, my iPod, like the new generation one, and a pair of Apple earphone with the microphone built in nice. and his laptop speaker. And that's, that's all he used to do it. But he laid that all out and I'm like, Oh cool. What software do you use? And he goes, you know, a little bit of capturing and audacity. And I do a little bit of editing and this other program, but you know, super nice guy. You know, I, I really wish I lived in the States that I could go to one of his meetups. Um, but anyways, yeah, you could still go to one. Of, you, you have a passport. Like it's within your power. Yes. Yes, that's true. But anyways, to cut the answer short, because I'm rambling now, um, 
favorite YouTube channel that I viewed in 2014, PBS Idea Channel. So I, 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 what I interpret from your rambling is you would like to edit the podcast from now on. That's why I maybe want to build a computer <laughs> that has good enough capabilities to be able to handle that. Ooh. Uh, you know, my favorite YouTube thing or, or thing that I, there, there are a couple, uh, I really love Pemberley Digital's, uh, Frankenstein. Um, it is, it is funny. It is amazing. I really love the art assignment. Um, but my favorite YouTube thing, my favorite internet thing for last year was Desert Bus 8. Partly because, um, I just started a new job. And I started it the week after Desert Bus 8, so it was like my last week of, of unemployment. Um, but I got to, or well, I mean half employment with freelancing and whatnot. But I got to watch basically all of it. I, out of the 158 hours that they bust, I probably watched 120 Sort of everywhere I go, I have it on. I didn't go very many places because it was Desert Bus and... And I laughed, and I cried, and the Desert Bus gets really emotional. Mm. And it was it was a really good time. And I spent a lot of time in the chat. I helped out. I helped out with a, a little bit with the Desert Bus epic poem, and you know, lots of really random things. But they do a they do an incredible job every year, and they are hilarious and wonderful. Mm. Uh, and they don't do sketch comedy anymore. Mm. Loading Ready Run did their last uh, as we're as we're uh, talking about this. Uh, it was just uh, last week. They did their last uh, sketch. Mm. They did eleven seasons of sketches, and they're still doing a bunch of other stuff. They're not they're not retired by any stretch of the imagination, but they want to free up the time from their weekly sketches to do uh, a bunch of cool stuff. Mm. Uh, you, if you are curious about it, you can totally find a link to Desert Bus and Loading Ready Run down below, and also uh, over Ryan's face because I do that. That's still going to be a thing this season. <laughs> the, uh, the rule of the podcast is everything cool that you do, I cut. <laughs> Which, if you start editing the podcast, you might be able to change. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, what was your favorite internet thing? Um, other than Twitch Plays Pokemon, because I actually... Fish Play Street Fighter? Yeah. Fish Play Street Fighter was so amazing. Uh, My me, nieces love it. For me, Twitch Plays Pokemon was definitely awesome. Yeah, it was the only <laughs> thing that I consistently went back to. Um, no, I would say my favorite internet thing was starting to learn about the internet of things, uh, which is probably nowhere near a new concept for anybody who knows anything about the internet of things. Uh, but I recently... I agree that it is probably not new to people who already <laughs> know about it. But, yeah, okay, touche. Um, but since I started my new position at the college, uh, I take minutes uh, for, among other things, the information technology committee and the electronics committee and one of the topics that keeps coming up is the internet of things and then cbc has run a few uh segments on it on their spark program uh, and then a few um, uh, blogs and sites that i that i frequent often talk about it and it's just it's a really interesting i mean the internet of things has always been there like when as a kid when i watched um um Back to the Future, for example. I think Back to the Future 2 is supposed to come true this year. Yes. Not not the hoverboard, but the, the date in which they go back. I'm I'm really I'm forward. really hoping that the fashion comes forward. I've got a whole bunch of like neon stuff in my closet. I just want sell, a self drying coat. Um, or self self do up sneakers that are not crappy. But um <laughs> but like the, the concept of an interconnected digital life is is not necessarily new, but that we're getting incrementally closer to realizing it now beyond um, toys like a lot of technology a lot of things that we have are more or less toys as opposed to say connecting your bed and your chair to a wi-fi why would i need a wi-fi bed i don't know but what the internet I, of th things says you do what would i do what would my bed do with a wi-fi connection it would probably track sleep track your movement true true it could perhaps qu uh, quantify the quality of your sleep um if you're into the quantified self, it would definitely help. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe like really, like is it, is it going to play soothing music? Maybe, maybe, or maybe, uh, yeah, maybe if it detects that you're not sleeping well, it'll gently start like rumbling the bed so that it's uh, if you find that comforting. That yeah. would be terrifying. Probably when your bed thinks for itself, but. Well, no, no. I mean that that my, my bed actually thinking brings into a whole other. I don't particularly you know wish to live a life 
under the scrutiny of my mattress. Hi, Dave. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, Dave's not here, man, yeah. first off. And second off, no, that is, that makes, as a person who is perfectly fine with putting chips in their body, putting chips in my bed, weirds me the hell out. Well, yeah, because that's how you get ants. <laughs> What was your favorite internet thing of 2014? I already said it was Desert Bus, but... Um, I thought that was your favorite YouTube thing. I could, it was also my favorite internet thing, but uh, I, can pick, I can pick another favorite internet thing. Sure. Um, uh, this will get a little dark. My This is not actually my favorite internet thing, but it is the first internet thing that sprang to mind when we thought about internet things. Things being sites or memes or movements or things that happened uh and there was a lot of social justice stuff going on this year Mm -hmm. which is really great there were a lot of really cool um and really powerful hashtags being passed around like yes all women and black lives matter and Mm -hmm. um stuff like that but um the the first one that i thought of and this is not my favorite nor is it the best by any stretch of the imagination um, was Gamergate. Mm-hmm. And the reason, the only reason why it is on that list is because every time there is a an incident like this, or a series of incidents like this, I mean, I, I, I classified 2014 as the year that we found out mm-hmm. because these things happen all the time, but this year a lot of it was brought to light. Mm-hmm. And is that people that I follow on the internet people whose work i'm really interested in uh people whose videos i watch or music i listen to or who i just talk with on on social media invariably a small fraction of them hopefully small will leap forward from the closet of misogynistic idiocy and parade it around in front of everyone and i am glad that they feel comfortable living out in the world as misogynists Mm -hmm. and so that i can then unfollow them (laughs) and not deal with their crap and hopefully dissuade other people from having to deal with their crap Mm -hmm. um that is the only silver lining to things like this that i can see is that it, I mean, apart from bringing, hopefully bringing awareness of, for example, the pressures that, uh, that women face in the gaming industry and on the internet in general uh, into into the light and into the mainstream, or similarly the kinds of racial pressures that people of color experience when dealing with police officers. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are, like, like I, I, I don't know that that's a silver lining because in order for people to hear about these things, they have to be happening a lot. Yeah. But that is that is the internet thing that which I note most, and which I sort of spent the most time interacting about. Uh, speaking of shitty things that happened this year, um, the highs and lows of 2014. I, I'm I'm gonna kind of echo what we said at the top of the show that there was just a lot of lows. Um, that seemed to, to grip the, the news cycle that gripped my attention. Um, so I don't really want to talk too much about it, but I will acknowledge that there's a lot of crappy things that went on, not just in North America, because we talked about a lot of things that happened that were Canadian-based um, at the top, but also things abroad, you know, the, the things like uh, Boko Haram and um, mm-hmm. ISIS and whatnot. Um, so I don't want to talk about that. Um, but in general, the highs of, of 2014, I mean, uh, we landed a, a probe on a comet. That was pretty that awesome. Was pretty awesome. Um, it's just, I just felt in general, 2014, for me personally, it was just, if I had to sum it up into three words, it was probably, as, it was awesome. I did make him sum it up in three words. In three, yeah, he forced me, a philosophy student, to be concise and i would say that it was in 2014 it was awesome uh for me personally um a lot of the things that i thought about uh if you remember back first episodes of uh the last year's podcast when we talked about um birthday traditions when i was looking back at my uh entry for my 2013 birthday 
Uh, I noted a lot of things that were I was unhappy about. You know, I was unhappy about my body image. I was unhappy about um, not feeling creatively fulfilled. And then in 2014, whether consciously or unconsciously, I started to address those things. Uh, I started working out despite breaking my leg. I started working out. Um, I, we made the podcast. Uh, I learned how to change the oil in my car. I helped a friend frame a, a shed. Uh, Jim and I and uh, Gina and Kaylee made a song for Christmas. We, we didn't actually make that song. Oh, sorry. Tim, Tim Minchin made that song. Yeah, sorry. We recorded a cover and yeah. a video for I would love song. to take credit for White Wine in the Sun, but uh, that is a, an amazing and beautiful song that no. we totally did not write. Sorry, we did not write, but we did create a video cover and a cover song of it, which we'll link over top of my face. Probably. Um but so I mean 2014 for me personally was a really awesome year I did a lot of cool things and it really set me up for more things that I want to do in the future for example right at Christmas time a friend of mine showed me how to build a computer now uh, instead of buying a computer I'm going to look into building my own Mm -hmm. in the new year and I mean we'll talk a little little bit about that in the next episode but it's just it's 2014 just was a great year for me nice how about you? Um, my highs and lows were, I don't know, pretty high. We had a great time at Headshots. We're working hard on next year's Headshots, will be, which will be in September mm-hmm. uh, instead of May because uh, September is better. Uh, you hear it here first, September, better than May. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I had a fair amount of, I, I guess I, I had a fair amount of low points. Um, I stopped writing for a while, which really bothered me. It, mm-hmm. uh, when I don't have enough like you, you get to that point where you're like you want to do a thing but you don't actually you can't actually muster the motivation to do it my thesis and so you, is like that so you just sort of feel bad about it mm-hmm. and then you continue to not do it mm-hmm. because now you're so busy feeling bad about not doing it that you're still not doing it mm-hmm. and i eventually just got to a point where i was like f it i'm just gonna write stuff and i started writing stuff and now i'm i'm getting back into the habit of writing stuff makes me feel much better Mm. Uh, i also have a fun new job where i solve problems all day which is super fun um and taxing and creative but fun Mm. i get really interesting problems but uh yeah i want to do more dope shit as kanye west would say in this video clip but uh beyond that I can't. I mean, I guess the the the, the downside of twenty fourteen is I for for the first half of it I was sort of in a routine, and the fact that I can't remember very much of that routine means that it was dull and mm-hmm. boring, and uh, I'm endeavoring not to continue that because, um, I cannot stand dullness. Mm-hmm. I live in fear of it. It is terrifying. Yeah, I mean, I know. I like. I would. I would rather be unfortunate than boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know that that's a great view to have i don't know that it's one i would recommend but nonetheless my 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 fears and insecurities orbit far less around the notion of unfortunate things and far more around the notion of just plain being boring which probably tells me that i have it pretty good Mm -hmm. um but on the note of me having it pretty good Uh, And hopefully you are having a very good new year. Mm -hmm. And we will see you in two weeks. I will probably see you sooner on the channel playing video games. We're still playing Bioshock Infinite. I am still really bad at it. So if you have any tips, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, And we will see you next time. I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. Signing off. 2015. Stay awesome. I totally forgot the thing that I say at the end. I totally forgot it. I was like, and this is the concert cruise. I'm like, this is not what I say. This is not what I say. I say signing off. And you say, stay awesome. Yeah.